So the last couple days I've been playing around a lot to see how far can I take the speed, the performance of my APIs. And I found an approach that worked surprisingly well. I even took this as far as all you need to do is set an environment variable. I called it the fast mode, dubious name, I know, but it does what it says on the can. After you set that environment variable, your API just automatically, not really, becomes much faster and much more consistently faster. It also has a bunch of other benefits, like it's super cheap cheap to run. Now, I'm not gonna pretend it's perfect, it's not, it has one drawback, we're gonna get there, but it really shows what's possible, how far you can take API speed. So let's see how the hell this works. To demonstrate, I'm gonna use Next.js, this is not Next.js specific at all though. So normally when you have a Next.js application, then here is how you are kind of expected to deploy it. Now you don't have to, right? You could also choose alternatives to Vercel for your front end or for your back end, for example, AWS Lambda. But in most of the cases, you're actually gonna have something like this where both the front end and the back end together is hosted on Vercel. And with the approach I'm going to show you in this video, the back end is not going to be directly deployed on Vercel, even though we still have the option to deploy to Vercel just like before. But essentially, there is this ominous tool that I'm going to get to in just a second here. And this tool allows us to actually choose where we want to deploy our back end. So that can definitely be Vercel. But this tool is very portable. So it also allows us to deploy anywhere else. And we're gonna get to that, right? There's another way to deploy this. That's gonna actually bring the performance improvements, right? First off, what is this tool and what does this tool give us? This tool is called Ono.js. It's a lightweight web standards following web framework that integrates perfectly with Next.js, so nothing actually changes. We write the backend as if it was pretty much a regular Next.js backend. It's kind of like a drag and drop or drop in replacement, right? So there's basically two advantages to this. First off, there is a nicer API to our Next.js backend API routes. Because normally how you create an API route, let's zoom in so you can see this easier, is like this with an API slash route handler, a folder in which a route.ts file lives. Many people don't like it, myself included. This is not a super nice API to work in. In Hono, you can stay in Next.js land, but you can define your routes a bit different. We can define a catch all route just like this in angled brackets and inside of here define one route.ts and this route.ts will be our entire API. This might sound abstract, but it's really easy actually. We can import two things, one from Hono and one from the Vercel integration, and then say this is gonna run at the edge. This is gonna be important later, by the way. Let's initialize the app, and if you've ever worked with any kind of backend framework, this is gonna look super familiar to you. We can define or get or post any HTTP verb routes right here, export the app as default, and also export the get handler from this API. And just like this with the app.get, or we could similarly create like an app dot post, for example, at the same route, this is all we need to do inside of the file system. Nothing else changes and all our APIs will now be handled by this instead of the previous route handlers. So the API is actually a lot nicer, at least I think so, in Hono. Of course, that comes down to personal preference. But one big other advantage is the portability. And that is because Hono runs on web standards, it integrates super nicely with Next.js. Because I've opened up the Next.js page here, route handlers allow you to create custom request handlers for a given route using the web request and response APIs, which are web standard. That allows us full flexibility on how we deploy it. And this is the important step in how we achieve the more consistent and better speed. Because as I showed you right now, this is literally ready to deploy to Vercel, but we can deploy this anywhere else. And that includes places that are cheaper, that are faster, and that are also more consistent. And it sounds pretty complicated, right? How are we going to get all these benefits, Josh? That's probably really hard. How are we going to get cheaper, faster, more consistently faster API routes? And it turns out, no, it's not actually hard. It's pretty straightforward, in fact. We can simply say yarn deploy backend. I'm going to show you the script that this actually executes in the background in our CMD. And that's going to deploy our page to something called Cloudflare workers. And this is where the edge right here comes in. Because when you define the runtime edge anywhere 
in your default Next.js application. Like in this basic API route, for example, all you're telling Vercel is that you want to deploy to the edge. So here's how the deployment works in regular Next.js applications. All that happens is if we set this edge flag, then our Next.js backend is going to be deployed to Cloudflare workers automatically. And if we do not set this flag, then by default, it's going to be deployed to a normal serverless environment. And Vercel just uses Cloudflare workers under the hood. But if we use Cloudflare workers to the portability that Hono gives us, Hono is not responsible for the speed, right? The speed I showed you in the very beginning of the video, that does not actually come through Hono. Hono is just the portability that allows us to deploy directly to Cloudflare workers with almost changing nothing in our code, being able to use all the APIs like databases and so on that we have in our Next.js project. We can still use them almost as is, slight modifications, but this portability that Hono gives us allows us to deploy to any other place that can run JavaScript. So wherever we want, Vercel included, right? Nothing has to change. Okay, so it just deployed or changes to remote so I can show you the speed increase in a production environment. While it deploys, I'm gonna show you what happens. And you know, there's a lot going on here, don't worry. All this you can see right here is just to track kind of the average, the re-renders, the highest entries and so on, kind of the statistics. The important thing we are measuring is this part right here, just this. We are measuring when we start using the JavaScript performance API. We are fetching the URL, which is nothing else than our backend, either the Hono version that is deployed to Cloudflare workers directly, this path right here. So the green path is the fast mode. That's what I called it. I know stupid name, but whatever. And the Vercel path is the normal path. This is the route handler. So essentially Cloudflare workers or Vercel, which also deploys to Cloudflare workers because we set the edge flag in our API route. But as you're going to see, it is much slower. And we're simply measuring how fast this fetch request takes. So if we try this out, let's actually reload this a couple times because there's going to be a cold start involved. And if we refresh this like a couple times, then we can see the response time evens out. So let's kind of delete the analytics data I'm keeping track of in the back end, just so we get a fresh start and have a very even comparison for both, right? So let's do this like 10 times. Let's give it 10 re-renders. And this is the normal Next.js API route, by the way. Nothing changed, deployed to Vercel. And as you'll see, the average is around 29 or 30 milliseconds. Now, by setting the fast mode flag, if it's not set, then we're gonna go to the Vercel deployment. If it is set, then we're gonna go to Cloudflare workers. Let me show you the effect of what this does. Let's set the fast underscore mode to true. We're gonna hit save. This is a Vercel environment variable. And then we can go ahead and restart this deployment. Redeploy so the environment variable changes are detected. And then you'll see what's gonna happen on this page. Then pay attention to the average. If we refresh the page, we can see a hello from the Hono backend. And already there's 18 milliseconds. But again, to keep it fair, we're gonna refresh this like five times, then get rid of the analytics data. So we have a very fair performance. And if you remember, the old average was like 29 or 30 milliseconds. And if we refresh this, you're gonna see this is much lower. We're getting 13, 11, 10 milliseconds, sometimes even nine milliseconds, which is pretty insane. And then after 10 re-renders, we're going to be about at 13. So this is like double, more than double as fast as the other one. Now, 10 re-renders is not a huge kind of data sample size, but as you'll see, this is actually pretty consistent. Now, the highest value we've ever gotten was a 51, and I think that's because I hit the reload like twice at the same time, but it's much more consistently faster than the regular Next.js API route. And that is only because we're now directly calling the Cloudflare worker in fast mode without changing any of the backend code, right? This is the Cloudflare worker. This is literally the code it's running. We just need to deploy it separately using the yarn deploy backend command that's going to separately deploy your backend. And all we're doing if we set the environment variable is essentially a switch that is happening right here. And if we go into the get absolute URL, we can see we're either calling the Cloudflare worker directly if the fast mode is set, or we are calling the route handler if it's not set. That's really all it is. And if you're wondering what the package.json script is that we're running for the deploy backend, it's just using Wrangler and we're using the Hono API route to deploy our backend. It's as easy as that, right? Wrangler is like the Cloudflare tool we can use to deploy Cloudflare workers. And just like that, we 
you can get much better, much more consistent response times. And if you're wondering, yes, this also works not just in the hello world example that I'm showing you right now, but of course this also works if we had like a database. Now I've already done the database implementation, so I'm just gonna copy paste here from my right side. The only kind of downside that I've found out in this kind of approach is how you get environment variables. You know, in regular Next.js, getting environment variables is really easy. We can say const database underscore URL is gonna be equal to process.env.database underscore URL, assuming you've set that in the .env file. In this approach with Hono, it's a bit kind of worse. It's not bad, but essentially you can't get the environment variables at the top level, but you have to get them inside of the API route where you're actually executing your code. Is it perfect? No. Is it a big problem? Also no, but it's a bit different. So let me show you how this looks. Essentially, it looks like this. And we can import the Hono adapter that allows us to access these environment variables like this. And then, for example, we can create a connection to our database, for example, with like um, Drizzle or M. We can create it like this. So we have access to our serverless SQL database, just like this. And that's all it takes, right? But the code is a bit different. We don't declare it above the API routes because we don't have access to the context there that Hono gives us for each request. So we have to initialize the database in the API route. That almost brings no performance overhead. I'm not a fan of it either, but it's also a pretty small price to pay for speeds that are a lot nicer and also cheaper, right? Because Vercel adds markup on top of Cloudflare workers because all that happens is something like this. It still deploys to Cloudflare workers under the hood if you have the edge flag set. So all that happens is this really, and Vercel adds markup on the way. And if we kind of skip this step, then of course it's gonna be cheaper because Cloudflare workers are dirt cheap. So what are we thinking? I really like this. I think it's kind of cool and you could possibly take this even further I don't know, I've been playing around with it like one or two days and I thought it was just kind of cool that you can just take kind of the same backend, deploy it elsewhere and all you really need to do is like change that one environment variable and that's kind of it, you get the benefits. It, it kind of seems like too good to be true. Maybe there's a bug I haven't figured out yet. I don't know, but it seems pretty promising. And if one of you has ideas on how to really expand on this, hey, be my guest, right? I'm looking forward to see what you guys built with this. And that said, that's going to be it for this video. I'm going to see you in the next one. I really hope you enjoyed. Until then, have a good one and bye-bye.